Picture this. You've just splurged four grand on a top of the line smart telly. It's got all the bells and whistles. 4K, HDR, the lot. For a few blissful days, you're in binge watching heaven. Then, feeling helpful, you post an honest online review. Bonza pictures, but the smart features are a bit wonky, you write. No worries, right? Crikey. The next morning, you wake up to find your $4,000 investment has turned into a useless black rectangle. Confused and frustrated, you call customer service only to hear, we noticed your negative review. Your TV privileges have been revoked. Remove the review and we might just turn it back on. Oh, and no refunds, of course. Sounds bloody ridiculous, doesn't it? In the real world, this scenario would be unthinkable. You paid for it, you own it. End of story. But in the digital world, it's not just possible. It's happening. Money's changing hands, access is being revoked, and refunds are nowhere to be seen. Let's dive into the recent kerfuffle that's shaking up the virtual world and explore what it means for digital ownership, consumer rights, and the future of online marketplaces where your purchases can vanish quicker than a sausage at a barbie. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty, there are a few important points I'd like to address. The product at the center of this brouhaha is of an adult nature, but I won't be discussing its specific details because one, I don't want this video to cop a censorship and two, it doesn't matter what the bloody product is. Our focus here is on the broader issues of consumer rights and digital ownership, which apply regardless of the product type. It's important to emphasize that I don't condone insulting anyone, no matter how cheesed off you might be with a product or service. As someone who works in customer service for a government role, I'm all too familiar with the sting of insults hurled in frustration. Yes, it's often my excuse for a well-deserved glass of Shiraz at the end of a long day. Just kidding, mostly. I get it. Some situations can be incredibly frustrating. I'll admit, I've been guilty of raising my voice a few times when dealing with overseas call centers for Optus, feeling like I'm getting nowhere. However, it's important to remember that respect should always be our default mode. We should all try to hold our tongues and think twice before saying something we might regret. It brings to mind that old saying, often attributed to Thumper from Bambi, but echoing wisdom that's been around much longer. If you can't say something nice, don't say nothing at all. While perfect silence might not always be practical, especially when dealing with product issues, the core message of choosing our words carefully remains valuable, particularly in our digital age, where words can have unexpected and far-reaching consequences. With these thoughts in mind, let's delve into an incident that's raising eyebrows and questions across the Second Life community. It's a story that touches on the nature of digital ownership, the power dynamics between sellers and buyers in online marketplaces, and the unexpected consequences that can arise when these elements collide. A resident in Second Life purchased a product that didn't meet their expectations. Fair dinkum, they were pretty miffed. They contacted the creator to discuss the issues, but things went pear-shaped. The interaction escalated, resulting in the resident directing some choice words towards the creator. Subsequently, the user left a negative review on the product's marketplace listing. Soon after, this negative review disappeared from the marketplace. The situation took a more serious turn when the resident discovered that the item they had purchased had been remotely deactivated, rendering it as useful as a chocolate teapot in their digital inventory. As far as I know, you can't just zap a review unless you nuke the whole listing. So, for a product that's been around for yonks, racking up reviews, 
You'd have to appeal to the powers that be at Linden Lab to get rid of a pesky negative one. But reviews, even the not so glowing ones, are like gold for us shoppers. I always do my homework before buying anything, balancing out the good, the bad and the ugly to make my decision. I mean, if something's got like one or two stars, I don't even bother, but a few negatives mixed in, c'est la vie. Now we all know nothing lasts forever in the digital world. Crikey, even brick and mortar businesses can pull a Houdini. I remember this one time, years ago, I was working for this advertising firm. A few months after I left, the whole place shut down overnight. The boss vanished, leaving a trail of unpaid bills and confused employees. Clients lost thousands and folks were scrambling to figure out what happened. I was in the States when it all went down, so I missed the drama, but I reckon there were some heated courtroom scenes after that. So yeah, the digital world's even more of a wild west. Your favorite game could go belly up tomorrow, taking all those shiny cosmetics you splurged on with it. All you can do is shrug and say, well, I had a bloody good time while it lasted and move on to the next cool thing. Second life's cut from the same cloth, but here's where it gets dicey. A creator just deactivating a product because they got into a tiff with a customer. That's crossing a line. Block the client, ban them from your store if you must, but don't go nuclear on the product they paid for. And if you do pull the plug, at least have the decency to issue a refund. But as someone wisely said in the forum, welcome to SL, where the consumer has almost zero recourse if they're scammed, ripped off, or otherwise subjected to abusive behavior by a creator. Fair dinkum, ain't that the truth? By the way, I've left the link for the forum thread in the description, but fair warning, it's a bit of a dumpster fire down there. Lots of hostility and off-topic rants. That's actually why I'm making this video. The topic itself is super interesting and important to discuss, but it's getting lost in all the drama. So let's try to keep things cool and focused here, shall we? Now, some folks are talking about taking legal action, but let's be real. Who's going to lawyer up over a few bucks? Even if it might be breaching privacy or something, someone else suggested a consumer interest blog or bureau bonzer idea, right? But as another person pointed out, it'd be a thankless job with more drama than a soap opera. And let's face it, people are already scared to leave negative reviews or report shady behavior because they might get banned. We're always told, try the demo and once you buy, no take backs. But wait, the so-called bureau is here. It does exist in the form of, wait for it, Drum roll. Linden Lab. Ta-da. Yeah, I know. Second Life is mostly user created, but at the end of the day, it's Linden Lab's sandbox. They should be the ones making sure everyone plays nice. It's not an easy job, but hey, that's the gig they signed up for. Someone mentioned another virtual world where creators have to cough up refunds if a product's not up to snuff or was advertised with more sizzle than steak. If they can't pay up, they're locked out of uploading new stuff. I'm thinking I envy you, but don't quote me on that. Bottom line, this whole mess shouldn't exist unless creators are upfront about what they can and can't do with your purchase. Remember the TMP body from way back? The one using an external program for the HUD? Yeah, if that server went kaput, your fancy avatar body would be about as useful as a stubby holder in winter. The real concern is that creators can just zap a product you've bought at will, without even giving you a heads up. That's not just wrong, it's downright sketchy. And here's a creepy thought, for them to do this, there must be some script tracking your individual avatar. 
Should that even be allowed? I mean, when we buy a product, be it a real physical item or a digital one, we own it, right? There was a money exchange and everything. The only way we should lose access to a digital product is if the entire platform, in this case, Second Life, shuts down. That's just the nature of digital goods. But having it yanked away by the creator on a whim, that's a whole different kettle of fish. Unless I explicitly agreed to it as a customer. And let's be real, who reads those novel length terms of service? The creator shouldn't be able to just snap their fingers and poof, my purchase is gone. Sure, you could argue, well, they need to be able to push updates. Fair enough. That's how some products can tell you're wearing an old version of a body and nag you to update. I'm looking at you, Legacy. But there's a world of difference between, hey, time for an update, and oops, your product doesn't work anymore because reasons. Bottom line, when we buy something in Second Life, we should actually own it. No take backsies, no remote kill switches, no sneaky avatar tracking. Unless we've clearly agreed to it up front, our digital purchases should be just as secure as anything we'd buy in the real world. It's high time Linden Lab stepped up to the plate on this one. We need clear rules about what creators can and can't do with products after they're sold. Because right now, it feels like we're building our virtual lives on some pretty shaky ground. Oh, and here's some good news for those of you worried about this privacy issue. There's now a feedback thread where you can speak up and show your support with an upvote. Link will be in the description. The more of us who speak up, the harder it'll be for this issue to be ignored. So if you're worried about creators having this kind of power over your purchases, head over there and make your voice heard. Remember, in Second Life, we're not just consumers, we're a community. And it's up to us to stand up for our digital rights. So there you have it, folks. The wild, wacky, and sometimes worrying world of Second Life's marketplace. Keep your wits about you, and maybe keep a backup dance outfit handy, just in case. This is Priska Newell from Second Life Spectrum, shining a light on the quirky corners of our virtual world. If you've got thoughts on this digital kerfuffle, why not share them in the comments below? Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and if you're keen for more Second Life Insights, hit that subscribe button. It's easier than finding a snag at a Barbie. Got a topic you reckon needs a good look? Send me a message in world or on social media. I'm always up for a chat, whether it's over a virtual flat white or a digital Tim Tam. Until next time, keep your avatar looking sharp and your digital rights sharper. Remember, in SL, we're not just residents. We're a community. So let's stand up for our virtual rights, shall we? Cheers and a bientôt, everyone.